So I'm uh, I'm from Paris, France, where I did my uh, my studies, where I studied engineering, mathematics, and business. And after that, um, for for a while, I've I've been in data. Uh, initially, um, I worked at uh, Food Panda and Delivery Hero, which is a big food delivery company uh, present in mostly Southeast Asia and the Middle East, but in, in a bunch of different countries where I was, I did a bunch of, I started with BI and then went a little bit more into data science and was leading data science for a bunch of uh, adapting our models for, for all of the different countries from our headquarters. And then uh, I moved to a company called Side, uh, doing an application for um HR recruiting for especially for short-term jobs, uh, where I was lead, I was leading all of the data uh, team there. It was a smaller startup, so I had to start the team from scratch. So a mix of data engineering, data science, analytics, BI, um, and then I moved to Nubank, where uh, I spent uh, nearly four years, most recently. Um, and uh, I was leading the analytics engineers. So a bunch of different teams focusing in on, on a mix of data engineering, data governance, data quality. Um, and most recently, about seven months ago, I started working on my own um, company called Hyde Park Digital, where I help more large corporations working on their uh, data, how to leverage their data, set up data governance. So that's it. Cool. That, that sounds really exciting all over the place too. So uh, I, I'm curious, uh, you know, uh, I'd love to get your take on how do you see the difference between, you know, smaller, more agile sort of places that you worked at versus some of these really large companies that, that you're working with right now? Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously there's a huge cultural difference, but what about from a data perspective? Are they are they getting to the next level? Are they aspiring to get there? Um, yeah, there are a lot of differences I find between small startups, large tech companies, and large non-tech companies as well. Um, I think in in small tech companies or in small startups, generally the data team is not so big, so everybody does a little bit of uh, and of everything. Everybody starts with kind of the modern data stack from day one with a centralized team when the tech company starts becoming a, a bigger tech company uh, it starts having multiple teams working with uh, with data then then you need to improve to have better processes better data governance better data quality more things into place to make it more structured and usually different teams start having working in different business units in different groups so it's more important to have a connection between between all of them in bigger in much larger more corporations that didn't grow up as tech companies usually it's a little bit less depending on it depends a lot on the sector but it's usually more siloed technologies are older people have been taking different types of um of technology decisions and ways of using data from the past that they didn't necessarily um, update yet. But I've, I've seen, at least in, in the sectors that I've been mostly working with, which is the financial sector and, and the energy sector more recently, that people are very enthusiastic about moving to be more data-driven, using more modern tools and making sure everybody uses the the data in the in the company and, and uh, do, do you find these folks are uh, or or these sort of organizations are uh, sort of easier to move towards some of these modern data stacks like or, or like you know does that happen relatively easily or is that a big long drawn out process it depends for what and what kind of processes i think there are things where um it depends the use case. It depends on the performance that people are expecting. It depends if it's something more for analytical perspectives or for something that's going to be more in production. Um, I think the mindset nowadays in, in a lot of big companies is not to have huge plans on years and years where they will take ages to find to see a result, 
the more they can start to have some uh, proofs of concepts, things that they can start little by little put in, in production. I think that's really important, but there are some aspects that can take more time. One thing that I find a lot is uh, in terms of the data sharing between business units, I, this is always a topic, how much you share with the different uh, business units, what are the, the, um, uh, the, the commitments that each data sharer is going to have with the other data consumer. Um, it's been talked a lot in the, in the data data world in for, for people that use more the modern stacks, but it's also a big topic for large corporations where sharing data, especially in regulated um, markets like the financial sector is not only a technical uh, discussion, it's a legal discussion, it's a organizational discussion as well. So usually there are some use cases that can go quick, but some things can be a little bit more time consuming or require a little bit more transition and, and discussion. I'm, I'm curious for, for the use cases that can ultimately go faster. You know, certainly the technology is there. We know that the technology can certainly facilitate those kind of things. But uh, from, from a political perspective or people perspective, do, do you run into, you know, constant issues for like, you know, trying to break down silos where really people don't want to break down those kind of silos? Yes, and I, I think for the technology and the digital transformation or the data usages to become more frequent and for those use cases to really be successful, usually there needs to be some uh, senior level C-suite person that, that pushes for something to happen, which makes the politics uh, happen at the end of the day. One thing that is, is happening more and more in, in large corporations is having a chief data officer or chief digital transformation officer um, or a CIO. And usually it's it's a common model that, uh, that I've been seeing that it's one team that has a, an official C-level that can take a little bit more uh, political decisions and make things to move faster and try to align everyone on a table without being from a specific business unit or from a specific historical uh, structure in, in, in the organization. So usually having kind of a force that has a little bit of, uh, of influence and that is neutral compared to all of the different stakeholders helps things move uh, for, forward uh, faster. In your day-to-day, -day, do you typically interact at that level, you know, thinking about like the long-term vision, et cetera, or is it more architectural and, and process and all of that stuff? Um, it's a bit of both. Um, because there's always the part of like the transition itself, but it's also a part on how do you make it last for the future and for how do you make it last for the future? It's a lot of processes and choices and how to have people align on it. I, I think funnily enough, the, the technical decisions on the architecture is often not the, the blocker uh, in the... Um, in order to have some uh, some critical data use cases happening, it's it's often the processes part and the alignment between uh, um, people. I think usually the deci the decision making on the technology is is not the part where people are struggling the most. Um, so I focus a little bit more on making sure the technical teams and um, the more business team so to say the people that have some use cases to 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 deliver or to test manage to work together understand what are some good processes some good data governance practices they can put into place and having a plan with quick um quick results that they can get and and moving forward over time with without having to rethink a new plan every every time they do that they want to use their data so you brought up governance. I'd love to dig into that a little bit. Uh, like what in your mind, or, or let, let me rephrase that. So every time you look for governance, there tends to be some common um, sort of definitions out there, right? Like the old school legacy companies, certainly in our space who have done catalogs and all that stuff have basically said, oh yeah, you need you know definitions, you need tags, you need you know 
data stewards and that's about it and then now newer generations you know talking about quality and observability etc what in your mind is the full spectrum of governance that com companies should be thinking about yeah i think that's a great question because i think a lot of people speak of data governance associating it to different things um it includes all that you're saying but i think one part that um some companies are more worried than others is the uh, is the access part and the the gdpr questions depending on which countries they are operating so who what data is being stored who has access to it how can it be shared i think that's one aspect of it another aspect of it for me is very organizational who who decides on which data is being uh, used who is being responsible for maintaining some data for sharing some data um when when organizations become very big it's it, it's a real question um another thing i think it's the the interdependencies between all the teams and that's something that i've uh, that i've had a lot um at nubank as well like we had a lot of different teams working with data and how do you make sure that when you have um one team that feeds into data into another team that feeds data into another team and so on that the end <laughs> the end um result is something correct and if someone changes something in the middle of the of the whole lineage it's, it, it, like the processes are in in place that you cannot just break a whole important process um just because in the middle of the lineage someone could have the right to to change something important so i think managing that uh, that lineage part being able to to control it in the good way and definitely the being aligned on on some on some key concepts of not only data quality but data modeling in general and what i mean by that is making sure people i've seen it in big corporations where some business units they don't even know they, they don't have the same de definition at all of like some of the most basic uh, elements of the business and then you have people sharing data thinking the data is something and it's not the same i think that's uh, aligning on the core definitions, on the core concepts, whether it's the, the data definition themselves or a little bit more widely on, on the data processes or the, the, the way they would call a certain type of uh, database or way how it would be used. For me, all of that is data governance, is how to make sure data is really um, structured, managed, of quality, and also valued in in a company, making sure there is some part of the process that people don't forget to get the most out of their data, not just store it, but do something, do something with it that has some impact. You're you're essentially referring to like data literacy, data enablement, sort of thing, right? Like making sure, like you said, everyone gets the same value has an understanding that the value is in fact, you know, these are the parameters for getting value out of it. Uh, yeah. And then also like, you know, just constantly training the next generation on what it is that we do and how do we do it and all of that stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, that that's that's a it's problem. Not, it's also often very hard, especially as organizations get bigger and bigger and people that have created some data sets uh, or started some big data, like yeah worked on some data before has left the company you know decades ago or a, a long time ago um it it's it's really hard for managers and senior executives to have an idea of the extent of data that they have and that they have available for a use case i've seen large corporations that have been say, telling to me oh we need to um comply to this new regulation i need to send reporting for this this and that and have no idea where the data is <laughs> like i don't know if i'm i'm putting all the data that i think we have but I, i'm not sure if we have more than i'm forgetting somewhere and uh, it's hard it's hard to figure out all of the data assets that uh, that you have when you start having a lot of different parallel systems a lot of siloed data and complexity that is building up over time uh, I, I know you and I talked at some point about uh, con data contracts, and you know certainly we are seeing uh, a little bit now more sort of uh, systematic, sort of programmatic, I should say, uh, ways to deal with contracts. But this problem has been there for a long time. People have been dealing with it, 
in, in many different ways. Can, can you talk a little bit about your experience with contract? Sure. Um, I, I think this, uh, what, what we discussed before is that there are a lot of problems that we see in more modern tech, so to say, companies uh, that are talking a lot about those, those problems are things that have happened in a different um, way with other technologies in the past. And um, typically data contracts are, are a topic that is, is quite a uh, quite big trend at the moment and how to do programmatic data contracts. From what I've seen in, uh, in more traditional corporate companies is having those data contracts as actually an, a contract, um, a, a legal uh, contract on how much data they are willing to share at what pace, not usually not necessarily programmatically happening in, in, in the same way, or but with an actual contract on what happens if data that is that has been shared with another business unit leaks, who is responsible, who is not responsible, if data... Uh, is used for a, uh, an intent that was not meant to be in the contract. How how does that uh, impact? What are the SLAs that one business unit gives to the other? So it's it's not as modern and as programmatic as, as how what a lot of companies in the tech world are are starting to to implement. But it's it's something I I've been quite interested to see in some uh, in in some big corporate companies that actually have, have had this topic of if you have a lot of data and you need to do something with it and you have a lot of different stakeholders and people responsible when you have a lot of amount like have a very big amount of data to manage you can't just share it with a whole business unit if then the use cases are not going to be owned by your business unit so all of those um this dynamic creates a need for a contract. So in practice, there's a lot of, uh, of uh, data contracts that uh, that exist in, in many companies, just not in, in the most automated way. But I think there's a lot to learn from both, uh, both sectors or both types of companies. What in your mind uh, are things that actually don't work in, in either of those scenarios, right? Like you, you could go crazy with automation and everything's precise, but there are some things that fundamentally are problematic, uh, for example. Uh, can you talk a little bit about things that we as an industry are not really thinking about properly? Um, hmm, that's a hard question. I, I would say um, one thing that I've seen as a common mistake is not making the decisions based on your actual needs. What I mean by that is some some small companies are trying to put the model that they read that big companies are doing some some companies in the sector try to replicate exactly the best practice from another sector that doesn't really apply to them um so i think there is not one size fits all solution in the data world and and that it seems obvious said like that but in practice i've seen a lot of people saying oh but we're going to do like that because that other company does it this way and but it's ten, th it's 10 times bigger in terms of number of people using data or they, they use data for completely different types of use cases where the SLA's requirements are completely different. So I think this part, whether it's in terms of the, the technological stack um, or in terms of the data organization, the data choices, finding the right amount of uh, complexity versus needs or time invested versus needs because um if you if you have you try to have an organization with uh, squads where every squad has a one uh, data person but actually the team is not ready for that and it's it, you don't have a, a significant mass to do that it, it doesn't make sense even though it's it seems cool to say it's a new thing to to have a uh, one data person per squad or if you start using um if if you go too quickly into migrating to the cloud if you you didn't even have the basic uh, data modeling or or data quality checks before it also doesn't always make sense so i think what i from from what i would say is the thing we don't do um necessarily correctly is making sure we we're finding 
the solution to the problem of the company, not because it's cool, because it actually serves the the it's it gives a solution to the problem, not because it's it's a new thing that someone read on, online and it seems cool to apply in the company. Yeah, that that's actually a really really good insightful thought there because like you know we as an industry are absolutely at fault of this. So one of the dirty secrets there is. Uh, you know, you have to stand apart from the rest of the crowd and you come up with your position papers, white papers, and you put all your marketing dollars into telling everyone that this is how it's done. Our way is the best. And then, like you said, like, yeah, it maybe doesn't apply every single time. You need to think like you would with like literally every decision you would want to make in life, right? Like, is it is it something that works for you or doesn't work for you? Uh, exactly. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I hope a lot more companies, at least from our side, you know, think about it that way. Uh, it, I think the the world would be a much nicer place if we were uh, more honest about, <laughs> like, you know. And I think it's it's normal to have phases and and to to know. Okay, at at this point, we do we do our data stack in that way. We do our data organization in that way. And at another stage of maturity it's going to be a little bit different and that's normal like because if you start having the top notch thing that you need as a very big company when you do a startup you're probably going to lose a lot of money and you're going to lose a lot of time yeah. you're not going to be um uh, agile enough to to make changes and and vice versa some very big companies want to do a cool startup thing and then it, it's not necessarily um fitting the actual process they have inside so finding the right balance between being um being innovative being disruptive but finding the right solution for the right phase of the company and even understanding for your type of company are those phases happening fast or are they kind of stable if you're a big corporation the chances are things are moving a little bit less uh fast than if you're a company that's in a scale-up moment that they know they're going to have a huge increase of volume or huge increase in in use cases um very quickly so i think it's there's yeah finding fi figuring out the right solution for the right moment and the right transition plan as well for it is uh is very critical in yeah. my opinion yeah in, in in defense now i'm going to speak for our our space uh you're absolutely right on that too in in defense of our well, marketing people, solution provider people, they do insist that, you know, ensure that you calibrate your maturity cycle in, in pretty much the right way. Again, unfortunately, it doesn't happen well. Not everyone does that. Uh, but yeah, that that's that's a really good, good point there. Uh, so- uh, And just uh, adding one more thing I find fascinating about, um, about the data world, which makes me super passionate to work in that field is I find- People that work in any type of company, it, like working with data, everyone's quite passionate to be at the forefront of it and using new technologies, knowing um, just re uh, a lot of people that I've interacted with in whether it's in the tech world or not tech world, spend a lot of time reading articles, understanding what are the new products on the market. There's things happening all the time new new ways of working with data new new tools it's it's something i find it's a very dynamic environment and i find that the data professionals usually very curious and passionate about it so i find it uh, quite nice this leads me well into my next question which is uh what, what are some of the technologies uh that are really exciting you nowadays uh, i mean let, let, let me uh, sort of inject over there and, and just say that I would love to also talk about LLMs, large language models, AI, et cetera. But uh, yeah, t t tell us what, what, what are you most excited about? What I find most exciting is um, kind of bridging the gap between technical people and people that don't see themselves as technical, but that that have a lot of the ideas on how to make their business better. So anything that can help those uh, communicate and align on some common, uh, whether it's common definitions of, of data, whether it's just 
understanding each other on the use cases, how things work. I, I find that really fascinating in a sense. Um, LLMs are a little bit going in that direction because it makes any person that just can write a question uh, have a lot of information and be like, wow, what this is what technology can do for me. But in general, within um, organizations that use data, I find that there is so much to do still between technical and non-technical people and like generating that spark and making things happen because it's very often and even more so in non-tech companies that people that have a domain knowledge about their business um, are a little bit scared of um, talking about technology because they know this is not their own expertise. And then talking with the IT department is always something that makes people scared and they don't know how to speak the same language. So I think finding ways, and I think data catalogs go totally into that category. Um, when you have a data catalog and people can can um, look at the data and think like, oh, I don't need to be a, a super technical people. I don't need to code something just to have an idea of what data exists. Um, all those kind of things, I find that very, very exciting for the future because so many people are interested on, on being more innovative, doing more data use cases. And they usually don't manage to communicate very well with people that can help them make it happen. So yeah, th those this space is something where, that I that I find very, very interesting. If you had pretty much an unlimited budget to to solve big problems, what are some of the things that you'd like to, you know, see solved, have products built for, or you know, change people's minds on things of that sort? Um. I, I think, and, and that's also what I'm I'm working with um, with some clients is making making it easier. Um, I, I like a lot the part of um, managing data at scale in in large organization. That's that was what I was doing at uh, at Nubank, having to deal with data that was a lot of data and a lot of different teams working with data, being able to monitor everything that you have and have a clear understanding of all the all the different use cases for the data who is responsible who are the chain of people responsible for for uh, every use case how do you make sure that they actually happen in a good way and yeah ha being able to to coordinate a lot of people working with data at scale i find that um that's where i'm uh, that's what I'm focusing on my day to day. And this is what I find um, where I think there's a lot of space in terms of tooling for executives that need that have to manage very large um, data assets in very large corporations, a lot of data use cases. How do you make sure to coordinate that so that you can actually scale all those use cases, make it happen, help people align, um, understand what are all the teams that are um creating new data maintaining data that are going to be do some migrations how does all that work i i feel like we have a lot of tools uh, more and more tools for the um, for for the data practitioner i would say not necessarily for the data executives or managers that have a lot of data to manage and that need to make an impact at scale with their data. That, that th this is the space that I find uh, particularly interesting and in that, that I've seen firsthand um, myself. Nice. Yeah, and from a product perspective, from a product management perspective, cat herding is, is an evergreen field for us, right? Like every industry, every product you do, if you can help people cat herd, <laughs> that, that's really good. So yeah. uh, cool. Thank you so much. It was wonderful talking to you. Thank you very much.